The average person's nightmares are filled with images of death or falling or wrestling with snakes, but mine are filled with needles. Needles, these slender shards of metal designed for the most heinous of uses, to prick, to pierce, to weave coverings around the truths that we need to see the most. Needles, thin as a desert breeze, but sharp as a spear. These are the things that haunt the world behind my eyelids. I grew up around them. The pine trees in my backyard rain them on me every day. Orange and green sticks of snow that carpets the walkway home from school. Pine needles led me to my grandmother's house, where she used her sewing machine to weave, stitch, and patch fig leaves for me. Sowing tags and sowing seeds that would sprout into quiet rebellion later in life. Translation? My grandmother knew that I was black. She loved that I was black. But she didn't think the rest of the world needed to see that I was black. So she soaked my scalp in VO5 and sewed a new tongue in my mouth that was distinctly not true to my heritage and therefore not mine. But I would then take that numb tongue home to watch daddy play with his needles. Now with him, I learned that there were two kinds of heroin in the world. The kind that's illegal and the kind that my mother was. I guess daddy couldn't handle the real stuff, so we shot the weak shit into his purple arms every night. And when my mother went on the battlefield to fight for his life, to declare that needles have no place in this house. He packed his shit and left. And his absence stabbed me with a pain that he will now never know because all I ever show him now is indifference. But that was not the last time that I would suffer from a pierced heart. There were others who would come to poke me in my not-so-thick skin. I remember them like a needle stuck in my memory's groove. I replayed their voices at night. Pokers with poker faces that hit their delight each time they came to impale me. Sticking me through the spine and spinning me on emotional spools until I'm too dizzy and can't see. It was always the same M.O. They played pop music to bait me into dancing with them. After all, pop is nothing but a needle with a catchy hook, right? Then they woo me with these stories of how they too have needles, but they're acupuncturists. They have a license to stab me. So with the promise of healing, I run to them, cleave to them, lay myself on their beds of nails, hoping to one day find pleasure in the pain, but it never happens. I only wake up with holes in my back, and I need to run myself to the clinic for yet another needle. This one designed to pull my blood into a vial to be tested for a virus that lives in needles and nightmares of every kind. And so for two weeks, I sit on pins and needles, waiting to find out if my name will be the next one to be added to a quilt. A quilt that's the size of nine football fields and every night Imagine being sprayed daily by shrapnel from a dirty bomb full of dirty dicks and broken promises. Looking around, seeing a thousand other pincushions with faces just like mine, all with the same goal in mind. So when they find the eye in all of these needles, God help me to find the eye in all of these needles. God, please help me to find the eye in all of these needles.